1970 Buick GSX 2-in-1 model kit, coming up next. Hello once again model car fans, welcome back to the channel. Today we are looking at a model kit which is on loan from my wife, it's one of her cars. This of course is the Ravel Monogram 1970 Buick GSX 2-in-1. Now I've built this car in the past and it actually came out in two uh, variations before it became merged into one kit. That of course was the regular Buick 1970 GSX and then there was the Street Machine version. Street Machine one is one that I bought. I didn't get the stock one, but this one of course is both. So without further delay, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And now without further ado, let's go down to the bench and check it out. And now we return to our Buick showroom for 1970, where we get to see the Buick GSX, which is Buick's muscle car of the era a competitor to the Oldsmobile and others, the Chevelle and all the rest. Actually, the same family. So this model kit was given to us to examine from my lovely wife, Julie. Thank you for giving us this kit just to examine again. Now, originally I built this one when it first came out. I do believe it was under the Monogram label. Then, of course, Ravel and Monogram merged, and now we've got this one. And I do believe that Monogram had a good hit with this, but they originally released it as a street version, as you see here. It was white with different decals on it. I'll show you the kit as we get to the end of this video. And then they added in stock pieces, so you could build this as a stock Buick GSX, which is nice. So if we turn this up on the side, we get a bit of a teardown of the model. So we'll just zoom in here a little bit. You can follow along with me at home. Follow the red stick. So this kit comes in at 8 and 5 16 inches long. There's 86 pieces in it. It's molded in white and it's got water slide decals. Buick had one of the toughest muscle cars of the 70s and now you can make it even tougher. Build it stock or add on some wild street machine parts to make your GSX go faster. 350 horsepower stock engine plus high performance version with high riser manifold and dual carbs. Optional street machine parts, authentic stock and colorful custom decals, molded in white and clear with chrome plated parts and black vinyl tires. And then here we get all our paints. Aluminum, desert tan, flat black, flat white, gloss black, dark, or gloss dark blue, Gloss red, gloss yellow, gold, gray, satin black, satin white, silver, silver blue metallic, steel, transparent red, and turn signal amber. So we'll just move this out. It's interesting too that this is part of Hallmark Cards in Crayola, which is an interesting merger with Ravel Monogram of the time. There's the side of our box. So now this kit is a skill level two for ages 10 and up, requires glue and some painting. And then here we can see both versions of this car. Let me just zoom in a bit. So here we have the street machine version from the rear, with the red taillights, and of course our big blown engine. And then on this side we have the stock variant with the Ram Air 455 cubic inch motor. So again, that was a special Buick one. Oldsmobile also had a 455, but the Chevys had 454 cubic inch. Okay, so now let's take the lid off this. And as you can see, we start with our instruction sheet, which is a big fold-out type. Here's a little thing to mail back to Ravel. Enduring Freedom. Operation F Enduring Freedom, American flag, you can get one. Anyway. I don't know if that's available anymore. There's our decal sheet. Nice work on there. We'll take a look at this toward the end of the video. Here we have our typical tires that are molded onto the, the parts tree. These, of course, are the GT radial style tires that came out in the late 70s. Not quite the factory stock tires that we need that would have come out in 1970. 70. Now we've got, actually, this is going to be a quick unboxing here, because all the parts are in one bag, except the chrome, which is down here. We get two chrome parts trees, 
there's some glass. See what I mean? This is just sitting there raw, unprotected. Whoops. And yeah, if you drop it, you get a scratch in it. All the rest. So our Baldwin Motion Cam uh, Camaro kit last time around, you can see the difference there. There's custom parts for our chrome and then stock pieces. Oh, and actually there's some more tires sitting down here. So let's see what's going on. Oh, these are those great big uh, GT radials from uh, Goodyear. These are the larger size ones for the custom street machine. So what I'll do here is I'll clear all this stuff out of the way and we'll get a look at our instructions. Here's our instruction sheets for our 70 Buick GSX 2-in-1. The nice thing about these is they always gave you a nice big write-up when you got a Revell kit. Well, at least to this era anyway. I could be mistaken on something earlier. The American Muscle Car era hit its peak in 1970 with virtually every U.S. automaker offering big block powered performance cars. And then it goes on. <laughs> Sorry guys, it would take me another video just to read this. So anyway, you get your basic symbols. Uh, 2x repeat several times. Question mark for optional parts. This symbol for decals. This exclamation mark for the alternative assembly. This symbol here for cement together. These little arrows in opposite directions, remove and throw away, and then the Do Not Cement logo. And then on the bottom part of this, gives you all the little read this before you begin stuff. And this also is English and French, so this is a Canadian uh, model. Well, not a Canadian model, but you know, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Targeted to a Canadian French English speaking. Anyway. And then you've got your paint guide over here, and then the numbers to phone for uh, hotline and all the rest. That's interesting. Has anybody actually phoned this hotline like, uh, and said, you know, I don't know how to glue the glass together or something? Like, I'm curious. If you guys have done that, let me know in the comments down below. Okay, so I will zoom out here, and then we'll take a look at our components. And here we go with step number one, which is our engine assembly. And as you can see, everything happens in this assembly. So we have these little side boxes that show different versions going on here, or details of how this all goes together. Now, let's take a look at this. So here we have our Buick 455. Going the in, One half of the engine block and the transmission are connected. This does look like it has an automatic. Yeah. There's that big transmission pan that pops up there. It's definitely an automatic. The oil pan is molded into the engine block, which always leaves a seam right up the center. So when you glue this together, make sure you scrape that really nicely. Sand it down with some sandpaper, too. Uh, try to hide that seam line. Okay, so we have our uh, cylinder heads going on to here. The stock steel manifold. The valve covers, which I do believe these ones are stock. Actually, that's, that's all they have. They don't have the custom. And then version B here, you get this high r tunnel ram intake manifold that you could put on. Uh, you got your carburetor, so I'm assuming there's a second carburetor on the parts tree to go on there. And then you got your stock intake manifold here and a single carburetor. Great big quadrajet, I do believe. Anyway, valve cover going on on the other side. All right, the front engine cover will glue in. And then here we've got our pulley assembly, which is over here on this part. You get the power steering pump, so this is a higher end Buick. And you get your alternator going on here with the actual alternator bracket, the correct style with the sliding arm, much like my 72 Oldsmobile. And then the belt assembly, all of that glues together. And you get your special, I do believe this is a nine blade fan. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, seven bladed fan with the clutch going on to the front pulley there and then our starter is gluing up on this side of the engine underneath so that's our engine assembly let's take a look at our interior assembly as you can see down here next up we get our interior assembly for step number two and here we have the buick dashboard going in with our steering column and steering wheel we get the shovel handle shifter then the armrests are separate, so this is a tub affair, much like the 69 Pontiac that I reviewed. So the armrests are all separate in there. Our seats do have front and backs, which is nice, but the bench seat is molded in place. 
Next up, we have our front suspension assembly. And as you can see here, we've got the entire underneath of our lower A-arms, cross brace and steering linkages and whatnot dropping in place, as well as anti-sway bars. And then on the inside, we have our upper A-arms gluing in on top there. Step four shows our engine exhaust assembly with our engine block, either A or B, dropping in into our frame here. And then our exhaust pipes and mufflers system is all gluing in here. And you can add in these riser blocks if you want to raise your rear axle. Step five is a rear suspension assembly. So you get two shock absorbers. You get the support arms with the brace going in here, which glues on top of your rear axle. Coil springs and the drive shaft going in place. And it says you can swap out these coil springs for the tall ones for your custom B version. Which, of course, these little things are going into those riser brackets that you dropped in. So you'll get the bigger rear axle, or the taller rear axle, to put in those bigger wheels that we saw in the parts. Next up in step six, we have our radiator window assembly. And here we see our radiator with the radiator shroud being glued together. And then the whole thing drops into these little holes here on our frame and our chassis underneath. And then we see the underneath of our body with the uh, pleated interior with the dome light and then our glass going in and they have the visors on the window and your mirrors going in there too. Step seven is a full page panel on our instruction sheet. Here we have the firewall details because there is a firewall molded into the body as well as the upper radiator uh, shroud here and whatnot. The hood latch and everything's going to go in there. I guess it's a brace, not a shroud, pardon me. Uh, there's our water bottle. Paint it flat white on the bottom, flat black for the cap on the top. So all this firewall detail gets glued in here along the other firewall. And then we've got a bunch of caps and other things here. Okay, one is windshield washer fluid. What's the one on the other side here? Not too sure. Uh, anyway. So there we go, there's a battery in there as well. And then it shows our interior assembly popping in underneath here. And all the trim around the edge, you paint silver. Or you can use bare metal foil, which will give you a better result. As we move the panel up here, which I can go right up. There we have the undercarriage dropping in. And of course you'd spread the sides a little bit to make this pop into place. And then once all that is in place and glued down, you can put your grill in here. And before you actually glue the grill in, here's the sub-assemblies for the grill. So in the back, in the center, you have the hood latch arrangement. You could paint this all flat black in here so you can't really see the chrome on the inside, which would be accurate. The chrome on the outside you do want to see. So here you have your headlights, and you can take your hobby knife and just scrape inside the chrome. Not all the way in the bucket, but just around that edge, and then put this in and use a little bit of liquid glue on a very thin paintbrush and just tap it on the edge between there and there and the glue will run around and fill the seam and glue your window or your headlights in and hopefully if you do it right you won't fog up your headlights with glue anyway uh, steady hand and eye coordination your turn signals glue underneath here just like on the real Buick and then your license plate which is chrome will glue on there panel 8 shows our rear assembly and luckily, it didn't say on the box, but thankfully we don't have to paint red paint on the taillights because they're separate pieces that are transparent that pop in place. Along this here, this indentation, are the letters that say Buick, and you want to paint inside the recessed area flat black. And there's our license plate popping on, and then our Buick had this nice spoiler, which is a factory spoiler. So it would glue in there, and then it tells you gloss yellow for stock. The version B, if you want it the same on the box, paint it metallic blue. That's how it looks from side view. And then our rear bumper, which was here, will glue into the back there. So now that the body is all glued together, we have to finish off our wonderful engine bays. So here we have our engine detail assemblies in step number nine. Let's just push this down a little, flatten it out. So we have our stock air cleaner with those two little uh, intake manifold or not manifolds, they're little, uh, uh, what do you call it, for your ram air hood. This is where they would, the air would come in and go into the air cleaner. 
and these little pads meet up with underneath the hood is what I'm trying to say. There's a warm-up tube which will glue from the side of the engine into the intake manifold, or sorry, the air cleaner. Oh my goodness. There's a brake master cylinder going in there and then our radiator hose and our distributor which will glue into here. Now because this is done last, if you wanted to actually wire your engine, I would suggest gluing this distributor in in the engine step and then drilling your holes in the sides and putting your wires in. Anyway, there's the optional bit. So you can add in the velocity stacks and your two carburetors and your tunnel ram plenum all on top of your big massive intake manifold. And here we have our wheel assembly for step number 10. So here it shows them going onto the car, but prior to that, you actually want to build your wheels. So they're basic three part affair, typical of the monogram style. So there's little pegs on the ends of four axles with a mushroom head. And then you would paint your wheel here. And these are the Buick Magnum 500 wheels, I do believe they were called. And then we've got our Goodyear tire. You want to paint those with white letters. And then the back here, the inner wheel, it will pop. Or once you put this all together, you push these wheels on until you hear it click. And that's that axle pushing through this little cone piece. And then the mushroom part of the axle clicking in place on here. So you want to make sure there's no seam lines on these little pins. Otherwise, your wheels will lock in and not rotate. And I've done that, and it's annoying. <laughs> So this question mark is, of course, for your version B, which you'd have those um, raised rear axle sitting there for these gigantic wider tires, which will go on the back. And of course, we've got our custom wheels here popping in and much the same. Next up, we get to our hood final assemblies. And again, we have two options here. We have the stock Buick GSX, which of course you paint this area flat black, which was an anti-reflection thing for the uh, driver so that you know driving at certain times of the day you wouldn't get sun reflected up from the hood into your line of vision so there's the hood tachometer which you glue on there then you paint it flat black the chrome trim piece for the upper molding which glues on here which is a nice touch it's better than having this flat across with the molding you know and being wrong the mirror face for your side mirrors and all that goes in together and then here, you, of course, we have our custom version with the hood with a gigantic hole in it. This one is more like the stock Buick Skylark type of hood. So just keep that in mind if you want to downgrade this to a dog dish style Skylark. That you could, you know, somehow fill this hole in and make the regular flat Skylark uh, type of hood instead of the GSX, which had these scoops in the hood. So anyway, that's our body and everything, which brings us to the back panel of our instruction sheet, which shows all our decals. So here we have three different license plates you could put on there, which we'll look at a little later. The black stripes for GSX or the other color stripes, depending, and all those details. Then there's our air cleaner and all the details for the decal lo location placements there. And then if we just move down a little bit, let's zoom in just for fun. There's our street machine version with the Buick GSX and the three shields. And then our decal there. So all in all, this is a pretty cool set of instructions from Ravel Monogram. And here we have our Buick Skylark A body. And in the Buick family, the A body was shared with the Skylark, the GS and the Skylark Custom. A-body platforms were the Chevrolet Chevelle Nomad, the Chevy 300 Deluxe, Chevy Malibu, the Concourse Estate, and the Monte Carlo. For Pontiac, we had the Le Mans, Le Mans Sport Coupe, Le Mans Luxury, and the Grand Prix. And the Oldsmobile was the F85, the Cutlass, the Cutlass Supreme, and the Cutlass Vista Cruiser. All of these were A-bodies and looked relatively much the same. Although, of course, the true GM uh, GM lover will tell you all the differences in between. As I know, the, the Oldsmobiles had different style roofs and all the rest, but the A-body really refers to the chassis underneath, for the most part. So here we've got our moldings that are nice. 
the turn signal lenses, um, our door handles, which look like GM ones. There is a seam line right here, but I do believe it's in the correct place if you wanted to make this a vinyl top. Or maybe it was a bit lower. I have to look at some pictures online. Across the back we have our keyhole, and we also have these little uh, lines in here. These little teeny things were actually um, put on the real cars like that because it was easier for them to uh, make them separate pieces. They're pot metal on the real cars. And then of course underneath the hood we've got this nice detail, even though it is a bit simplified. Ah, I do believe one of these bottles is actually a radiator overflow tank. I don't know, I can't remember. Write it in the comments below if you know what's going on there. <laughs> anyway, there's our battery. Uh, yeah, one of these would be windshield wiper, and that goes over to here, so maybe that's possibly it. Oh, that goes there too, I don't know. Whatever, you let me know. <laughs> My viewer, loyal viewers. Okay, um, underneath we have the ribs for the roof here. And as you can see, we've got mold marks again, so you're going to need your number 16 the hobby blade to remove those. But overall, a nice, clean, crisp body. Of course, some mold marks, or uh, sorry, flash points that need to be removed, and bits from where this was molded on the parts tree from the factory. But overall, looks really nice. Now our next parts tree, of course, is our chassis and some of our engine bits. And I have this upside down, actually, to the way I want to show it. So there we go. There's all our detail underneath here. You can see the nice gas tank, all the little bits and pieces. This is a full perimeter frame, as we're all A bodies. Um, yep, so <laughs> there's our front valence there. Our radiator with the radiator support, the firewall details, our engine block left and right, and yes, this is an automatic transmission, for sure, for sure. There's our front of our bucket seats, and oops, let's bring this up into the camera so we can see what's going on. I mean, look at that nice detail. Clean and crisp, that's a hallmark of monogram kits. Clean, crisp, and simple. Shouldn't be too hard to put this together. It's all in the painting and detail work. There's our engine block with the uh, oil pan in two separate pieces. It's got the frost plugs molded in place. Again, nice detail work. Nice texture on the rad. And turning it over, there are some little mold marks, but I don't think they're too much of a problem. Maybe the ones on top of the inner fender aprons once you open the hood. No, maybe not, because... Yeah, they're covered up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Okay, so there we go, and of course we have our little mark in here saying that this is uh, 1989 copyright monogram models, all rights reserved. So I was right, it was a monogram. Anyway, there we go. So here we have our interior bucket and the components that go with it, as well as our spoiler and our front engine cover and dashboard. So let's just take a look at the bucket detail. Again, not not bad, but without the uh, with going down a bucket, they have no window cranks on here, or maybe they do. Maybe that little blob right there is it. Like I say, the best way to do that is separate door panels, because then you get the real GM door handle, just like this one. But yeah, I mean, for what it is, it's not bad. And the bucket seat detail across the back. These little bits would be chrome. They are levers to fold the seat up and back so that the passengers in the back seat can get out in and out of the car. There's our dashboard, which looks prototypically correct for a G Buick GSX of the era. And then there's our front water pump and our spoiler. So that's what's going on for that part tree. All in all, it looks quite nice. The inner floor does have a little bit of a sink mark in here, but it's not bad. It's actually quite good. I don't think you really need to worry about it too much. And here's our next parts tree, which of course has our mufflers and exhaust system, our drive shaft, our pulleys and belts, the radiator hose, the starter motor, um, power steering pump, intake manifold for the stock version, as well as our exhaust and our cylinder heads. Here's our rear axle differential, as well as the front suspension assembly. And these are the cross bars that are going in here on our rear axle. Oh, something fell down over there. That's okay. 
So as you can see here, we've got some nice detail on these components, our lower A arms and all the rest. A little bit soft on the intake manifold, but it's still decent. There's our cylinder heads. You could drill out these spark plugs and wire the distributor if you so are desired. Turning this over, uh, not bad on mold marks actually. But still, you can see everything is nice, clean and crisp under there. So let's look at our final white components. Now here we have the stock and street machine components. So right here we have our GSX hood with those two scoops on there. Little sugar scoops, I've heard them being called. <laughs> There's our shock absorbers for stock. And then our wheel backs, our stock rear leaf, or sorry, coil springs. Oh, we do get these nice side door uh, armrests, pardon me, with the door latch. Then pull those up to open your door. There's our fan, steering wheel, steering column. There's that uh, distributor, pardon me, our power steering, and then, or, or sorry, not power steering, our brakes. Brake uh, cylinder there. Actually, that's a reservoir, brake reservoir. Alrighty. Okay, we ready? <laughs> Upper A arms. Oh, that's our hood latch. There's our tachometer and the wheel backs. Now on this side we get our street machine hood. Now this is a Skylark stock, Skylark style hood, and it's got the big hole in it. So if you want to build this as a stock Skylark, you're going to have to do some modification to that engine under there. Uh, or maybe swap it out for a Buick 350 or something if you can find one. And then get a sheet of evergreen styrene and cut this hole. Uh, actually trace this hole on the styrene sheet then cut it out and glue it in here and then you know put some putty on it and continue with your sandpaper down here carefully making the rest of this little seam line the ridge so it's like this one goes to the back up to there that's what you want to do there if you're doing a stock skylark otherwise just have the big intake manifold sitting up through your hood here the carburetors and all the rest. Uh, there are some extended shock absorbers for the extended springs. Those are those little uh, blocks to raise the rear axle. I forgot to mention these when we were doing the instructions. Anyway, turning this one over, you can catch a couple of mold marks there and there, but not bad. Actually, this, this is really good for uh, not having mold marks all over the place. There's bits for the hood latch, there's insulation in the braces underneath for our hood. Detail is, you know, it's nice for what we got here. It's not too crazy, yet not totally lacking. There's an indentation for our tachometer to go on, the nice little grills in there. Turning it over again, we get our mats. There is a sink mark right in the center here. It's kind of a pain, but it should not be too bad put it all together and have a nice looking model. Okay, let's go on to my favorite parts, which of course is the chrome. And here we have the chrome. And why do I like chrome? Well, I guess it's because I'm really a bird and birds like shiny things and I want to put this in my nest. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, no, but seriously, don't write bad comments in the comment section down below. I don't need to hear what I'm a bird brain or something. <laughs> okay, anyway, so there's our uh, stock wheels, which would be the Buick uh, Magnum 500s. And then we've got a nice bunch of chrome pieces. I think that's a carburetor. We'll find out when we flip this over. There's our air cleaner with the accurate intakes. Our nice grill. We can add in that uh, black wash into there. This along here should be flat black. And this little indentation with the Buick letters being in chrome. And then make sure you leave this unpainted because your taillights will go on there and they're clear. And with the chrome back here, it'll reflect out nicely. With their headlights as well. Um, there's our license plates, alternator, rear view mirror, the mirror inserts, our shifter handle, valve covers, The that's a stick shifter if you want to go that route. There's our transmission there. And then this is the brace that goes across the top here, glues under the hood. And then this is a separate parts tree with our intake manifolds and everything. There's those inductors. 
and our custom wheels. So again, very nice detail on here. We just bring it up to the camera so you can see. And look at that grill, just like the real thing. There's our back bumper. Very nicely done. There's our wheels. Again, some black and silver in there. Make it look nice, like the real thing. You have to do your research underneath. A couple of mold marks behind there. Uh, I suggest your file and sandpaper paint all this black so that you don't see it as you're looking in from the hood. And uh, again, very nicely done. Looking at our custom tree. There's those interesting wheels. They're all, uh, what do you call it, slotted through. Again, very nice detail. So you're getting some nice chrome in this kit for sure. And now speaking of clear components, here we have our front windshield and our back glass. With some notches in there for body alignment. And then we get our four headlights and our rear tail lights. Now if you look, you can see they've got the mesh in here. Remember it runs north and south or east and west. Uh, and not at a 45 degree angle, just so that you get your headlights in correctly. There's a little turn signal lights or backup lights. Can't quite remember at this stage. There are some sink marks in here, which you can easily fill and sand across. These are, of course, our um, sun visors going in there. And then here we have our tail lights, which have the correct pattern in them. And smooth on the back. Remember, these will... Actually, there's a couple little pins on there for alignment purposes. And keep the back of that bit chrome because, of course, you'll be able to have those reflect off the back. Actually, hey, here's a wrench. Let's see. See what I mean? There's that effect. It looks like it's glowing. So that's what you want to have happen. So there's our glass. The only sad part is this was not put in any bag. So hopefully they're not scratched or worse off, have a tire burn right in the plastic. So next up we have the typical monogram type tires that are in here. These are, of course, Goodyear GT radials, which came out in the mid to late 70s from Goodyear. And they're not accurate for a 1970 Buick. The 1970 Buick would, of course, had some polyglass tires on there. Uh, again, Goodyear polyglass. And then on the back we have pretty much enlarged versions of the GT radial. Again, not quite the correct tire for factory stock, but not a bad tire for this model kit. You can see the nice tread pattern on there. And then, of course, raised letters. If you don't want the raised letters and want to make it look more stock, just mount these on backwards because there's nothing going on on that side. You could even put this in your drill press or whatever and spin the, a nice uh, white wall or red line tire on there your choice. And these essentially look like the same thing. They're just bigger and fatter. Again, matching tread. <laughs> so there you go. But basically a generic tire and not quite accurate for the time period, unless you're building the street machine version, which you can get away with these on, because of course the street machine is custom. Here we have our decal sheet from 1998. This one includes different types of stripe options. Not too many on the stock one. We get our black and red stripes here, a GSX, and then you have a choice of either a white stripe or a yellow stripe, and I do believe this runs up the center of the hood. And that would be for different color combinations of this car. You're again going to have to look those up somewhere. We have these interesting South Dakota license plates. South Dakota isn't really a subject for license plates on decal sheets that I've seen in the past. Um, yellow GSX, factory showroom, license plates, or you can have these purple Buick emblemed ones for your custom car. There's a whole bunch of little gauges on here. There's an air cleaner decal and a bunch of underhood ones. GSX logos for the sides on your front fenders or whatnot. There's the one that goes on the hood, and these are on the sides for the custom. That, of course, is custom as well. So a very nice, colorful decal sheet for sure. And here we have our 1970 Buick GSX, as built originally back in the 1990s, or maybe even late 1989. And you can see quite a bit of a decal difference in this kit as compared to the one on the box art in this video.
But this was, I think, the first issue of this model. And this was done sort of back in the days of uh, the, uh, I guess it was Boyd Coddington came up with stripping the chrome off of cars and then painting all the chrome components body color. So that's why we got the front grille painted white and then along the sides no chrome and the back bumper also being painted white. Unfortunately I don't have the Buick chrome lettering going across here, which would have been nice. But anyway, this is how it all came out. So let's just turn her around here and then I can show you under the hood. Here's our engine under the hood. As you can see, it's a great big monstrous Buick 455 with that great intake manifold. It's a little bit dusty in there. But basically that's how your engine will appear once completed. And you can see that uh, distributor in here, which was just painted yellow back in the day and boy a lot of dust this thing is really dusty there's our brake uh, master cylinder as well as a bunch of the different components under here and the battery and whatnot could do with uh, some more paint up on the top for all the little posts and the AC Delco and all the rest our interior here is painted in a flat black a little bit hard to see through the window, but you can see the steering wheel in there, which again is painted with a tan just to make it sort of pop up and be visible through our windshield and whatnot. Let's just turn the car around to the passenger side. Maybe you can see some more detail in here. A little hard to tell. Uh, here, let's get a trace light inside. Can we see more? I don't know. Anyway, there's my interior for all that I'm trying to show it to you. And of course, our lovely Buick. And that completes our look at the 1970 Buick GSX 2-in-1 by Ravel Monogram. And if you've built this kit in the past, we'd love to see your pictures of it over on our Monster Hobbies Facebook page. So I'll leave the link for that below in the description. And if you did build the kit, how did you like it? What did you find uh, that you had any problems with? Or was it any problem at all? Let us also know that in the comments down below. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that amazing model car review. And thanks again to my lovely wife, Julie, for letting me look at this thing and to show it all to all of you out there in model car land. So next week, we'll be taking a look at another rare kit, an old Johan, which is really awesome. Everybody loves seeing those. So don't forget to pound that notification bell so that when I make that video and release it, you will be the first one to see it. And until next time, everybody, happy model building.